An ordered basis on a vector space gives us an orientation. We can also define orientations on the tangent space of a manifold at every point, and if those orientations piece together in a continuous, or in fact smooth fashion, then that manifold is said to be orientable. And when a manifold is orientable, there are always exactly two such possible orientations. So before we define what an orientation is for a manifold, we should remind ourselves what an orientation is for a vector space. So let V be a vector space, and let's say of dimension M. Two bases, which we've already understood, correspond to an isomorphism from V to Rm, where we take the basis from the standard Euclidean basis under that linear transformation. So take two bases, which are described by two isomorphisms, let's say phi and psi, uh, from V to Rm. Then these two bases have the same orientation if and only if when I compose one with the other in the opposite order, the determinant, which is a matrix in this case, is non-zero, or rather is greater than zero. Otherwise, they have the opposite orientation. Now, because these are isomorphisms, we know that the determinant of these uh, matrices can't be zero. So it's either going to be positive or negative. And if it's positive, we say that these two bases have the same orientation. And if it's negative, then they have the opposite orientation. Therefore, we say that an orientation on V is a choice. of an equivalence class of such isomorphisms. Where, again, two isomorphisms are equivalent if and only if when I take the composition in this manner, then the determinant is positive. Furthermore, a map between two different vector spaces, but let's say of the same dimension, equipped with such isomorphisms, but this time here I'm using the notation that C is a linear transformation from W to Rm. So a linear map like this is orientation preserving, let me write this clearly, L is orientation preserving if and only if the composition of these three functions, of these three linear transformations, has positive determinant. And it's orientation reversing if the opposite is true. And again, because L um, is assumed to be uh, an isomorphism, I should have said that, this is an isomorphism, then again, the determinant can only be positive or negative. So what are some examples of orientation preserving functions? Um, some examples, for instance, are shears that don't squash any dimensions, so shears that are one to one non-vanishing shears, rotations, and so on. What are some non-examples? Any time that you have a reflection, 
through a particular plane, then that's going to be uh, an orientation reversing linear isomorphism. So we can use this idea, which is an orientation on a particular vector space, to define what an orientation is on a manifold. And what we do is, for every point on a manifold, we know that the manifold has a tangent space. So we have a manifold. This is just a little piece of it. And on each point, we know that we have a tangent space of the same dimension of that manifold. And on this vector space, we can define an orientation. And although we discussed a while ago that you can't always define a smoothly varying basis on a manifold, you might be able to define an orientation. And in fact, you very often can. So with that, we can make a definition. An orientation on an m-dimensional manifold m is a choice of orientations on all of the tangent spaces on T C M for all C and M such that now before at, at first all we're saying is that there's an orientation at every point but we have no assumption on how these points vary, on how these orientations vary in a neighborhood of any point. So that's what the following condition is about, such that for any point, such as C in M, there exists an open set in our M and a diffeomorphism In other words, a parametrization from phi, from sorry, from u to m uh, intersect v for some open v, and let's say the manifold M is an RK. Such that and the condition we want is that the orientation doesn't depend on which point we pick. So we have that the differential at any point x in u, so let me write this as this is a function from tx um, of in v, but v is the same thing as our, sorry, of u, which is the same thing as our m, to the tangent space of the manifold at the point phi of x, m, is orientation preserving. For all x in u. So on the left hand side here, we use the standard Euclidean basis for the orientation of of this vector space because Tx Rm is just Rm labeled by some point x and that x has absolutely nothing to do with the algebraic structure it's just reminding us this is where the origin is whereas here this is a subspace of some Rk and there's no natural basis on it so what we're doing is we're putting a basis by applying this map by pushing forward the basis vectors in Rm here and all we're saying is we don't use the data of all of these basis vectors and move these around on the entire manifold, we don't assume anything like that because we're taking an equivalence class of such vectors. It's a much smaller requirement to ask that a linear transformation be orientation preserving. So this is the definition of an orientation on a manifold M. If we can do this at every point and we know that there is a chart, a coordinate system that preserves the orientation under the usual orientation of Euclidean space. And one more thing, um, a manifold, just some notation, is orientable if there exists 
an orientation on it. So the slight difference between this and this is that here I don't pick an orientation, I just know that one exists. And it turns out that there are only two orientations if they exist on any manifold. So let me leave that to you as a claim. This is not too difficult to prove. Um, if M is orientable, then only two orientations exist. And this follows from the fact that the determinant is either positive or negative. So what are some examples? Um, an example, a lot of things that you can draw and imagine. So any, for instance, a circle, uh, or rather the image of a circle inside of some Euclidean space is orientable. I can either choose my basis to go along this direction. And again, these vectors, it's just an equivalence class of such vectors. But, but actually on a one-dimensional manifold, we can actually draw an entire um, set of vectors that smoothly varies as you change the point. We can also reverse the order, and that would give us the opposite orientation. Another example of a manifold that has an orientation is the sphere. Here we can't necessarily draw a basis at every point, but we can still define an equivalence class of such bases. Something that's not orientable is, for instance, the Mobius strip. Uh, and I don't really know if I'm going to be able to draw this too well. <laughs> Something like that. You can, you can imagine this is drawing, um, taking a, a long sheet of paper, like a rectangle, and then orienting this in the opposite direction. So you take this paper, you flip this around, and then you glue the ends. So you glue these end points. So that's an example of a non-orientable manifold. And in order for it to be a manifold with our definition, we should require that this um, edge be open, and this edge as well be open. Another example is the torus. Uh, lots of manifolds that you can think of are orientable.